Oh, the fever. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Breaking news here at 6. We're getting a look at the man charged with the murder of Detroit Jewish synagogue leader Samantha Wall. It's uh, our news on Local 4 News. I'm Devin Skillian. I'm Kim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, what it's do you black know? Hebrew yeah. Israelite. <laughs> it had nothing to do with. Hey, no, no damn Jews. I, I'm mad at you, bro, but you had all those Jews up there in Michigan thinking that they was danger, man, for being Jewish. Well, man. they are. It's just not for being Jewish. <laughs> Look at that crazy hair, man. When it, it just like his thoughts, man. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> That was a great news here at six. We're getting a look at the man one. charged with the murder. Yeah, man, it is true. Man. Of Detroit Jewish synagogue leader Samantha Wall. It tops our news on local four news at six. I'm, Devin I'm Kimberly Gill. Wayne County prosecutor Kim Worthy announced the charges during a press conference this afternoon. Our Jacqueline Francis was there. She joins us live with what we're learning about this man in police custody, Jacqueline. Well, first, I want to say I just spoke with one of Sam's colleagues in the local Jewish community, and he tells me, well, they are relieved to learn this was not a hate crime. They're devastated to think. <laughs> they're no, they're not. <laughs> they, they wish it was. It was a hate crime. This is sick. This is sick, this is sick dude. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're yeah, relieved to learn. It's just like all the rest of the bomber that goes on in this fucking sordid country. Wow. Yikes, man. Um, and, and they lessened it like the, the tone, they toned it down quick. Like in that other piece, it was like, yo, the sky is falling. You know what I'm saying? Like, and this woman was just like, just look at the tone when they thought it was they Her funeral on Sunday again and again. Samantha Wall was remembered as one of Detroit's brightest lights. So deeply wanted peace for this world. You fought for everyone, regardless of who they were or where they came from. Police say the well-known community leader was found and near... And you got merged for no reason in the park by a sun menu, just like every other Local fucking Ford glider. Starts now with a <laughs> he tells me, well, they are relieved to learn this was not a hate crime. They're devastated to think someone could do such a thing. Police say this all started with a home invasion right here in this Lafayette Park neighborhood where Sam lived. Officials telling us that the suspect, 28-year-old Michael Bolanos of Detroit broke into her home and assaulted her, ultimately stabbing her to death. Despite the victim being a prominent member of the local Jewish community, officials say this was not a hate crime and that the two did not know one another. A few weeks ago, police began looking into Bolanos as a suspect after he was caught breaking into a car in the area. There's a lot. <laughs> so he he didn't like go to the ground. This bitch. Let me just go to the light. Let me just get the fuck out of go here. Go to Mexico. He, he was still lurking the neighborhood. He's crouching. Uh, what are the cow crouching? Negro crouching the negro. <laughs> is that is that is it a hate crime? What is? Yeah, I mean, yeah hate crime is bullshit. We today. all know that. It's only hate crime if you're white. Exactly. Exactly. Police cannot say at this time. The chief even calling this one of the most complex cases he's been a part of. The prosecutor was also there for today's announcement. Here's what she had to say. This is something oh. that's been. Yeah. Oh, God damn. Why is there a son, man, a woman named Kim in every fucking prosecution <laughs> office? <laughs> oh my God. We need fucking Kim Jong in every fucking prosecutor office right now. <laughs> Yo, are you kidding me? It's uncanny, man. We do need some authoritarian <laughs> shit, though, for real. It's uncanny. It's What's going everywhere. on, my guy? What's up, my guy? I mean, <laughs> everywhere. I mean, it's more black female Kim prosecutors than any than fucking like just regular prosecutors. Like the Kim, the black Kims are overrepresented. This shit is crazy. And can we appreciate what she spelled her name K Y M? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Oh yeah, Time? but you know. 
<laughs> look at that wily look in her eyes. She just looked deranged. Like she's trying to figure a way to get him off. How, how can you make <laughs> he, he, he don't ruin his life because you don't want to. You know, saying you don't want to ruin somebody's two lives. She she will make sure two lives don't get ruined. Yeah, be my <laughs> Look at her eyes. I thought I was done being shocked by this, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like for real, man, I mean, she's already gone, man. You can't bring her back. <laughs> yeah, we can't waste two lives. God damn it, he dead. You can't waste his life too. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. You're not convincing me that's not a mammy. <laughs> oh, shit, man. God. That's boss mammy. <laughs> yeah, she lets you know I'll cut some uh, ass up too. Yeah, she go upside you with the grits. The prosecutor was also there for today's announcement. Here's what she had to say. This is something that's been ongoing since October the 21st. I've been at this for a long time. Investigations don't usually happen in the 44 minute legal procedural type TV shows. They take time, they take attention, they take energy, they take passion, they take experience. We look at every angle, not we, the police look at every angle they can, whether it's forensic evidence, other investigative tools that they use. It was painstaking cell phone work, all kinds of things that took a very long time in this case. There was an incredible amount of work that was done in the investigation phase of this case. It was not easy, but again, there was a lot to look at, and we want to make sure that we look at every single angle before we charge a defendant with a crime like this. She said nothing. Or- no, nah, but think about yesterday in Massachusetts. They were complaining 34 years ago, some white man killed his wife and lied, said it was some black dudes, and they started rounding up sons. And we know that's bullshit, because what this is how it works. The way she said it, is how actually it works. They don't just round up Sunday. This is something that's been ongoing since October the 21st. I've been at this for a long time. Investigations don't usually happen in the 44 minute legal procedural type TV shows. They take time, they take attention, they take energy, they take passion, they take experience. We look at every angle, not we, the police look at every angle they can, whether it's forensic evidence, other investigative tools that they use, it was painstaking cell phone work, all kinds of things that took a very long time in this case. There was an incredible amount of work that was done in the investigation phase of this case. It was not easy, but again, there was a lot to look at, and we want to make sure that we look at every single angle before we charge a defendant with a crime like this. You got that? That's how it works, man. <laughs> okay? A white Something woman ended up mind. dead, or a glider woman ended up dead, or a fucking juice crew woman ended up dead, and they don't just go around and round up sons. They investigate thoroughly before they put charges on that son, man. Yeah, because there was, you know, clearly a lot going for the, the argument that this son, man, wasn't fucking shysty as hell and doing a bunch of other shit. I mean, he looks like a good functional member of society. I just spoke, or I'm sorry. We will have more on that conversation from her colleague that we spoke with, along with more from that news conference coming up at 11. Reporting live in Lafayette Park, Jacqueline Francis, local Okay, Jacqueline, we look forward to your report then. Thank you so much. Smash. Well, we begin tonight with new details on the investigation into the death of Samantha Wool. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm Glenda Lewis. Seven Action News obtaining video from the court hearing where a Detroit man was charged in her murder. We do want to warn you, some of these details are graphic. 7 Action News reporter Tiara Braddock has been looking at how police were able to link the suspect to the case. The Wayne County Prosecutor's Office say they have an overwhelming amount of evidence that points to Michael Jackson Balonis as being the person who killed Samantha Wall. They also Michael added that... Michael Jackson! Michael Jackson! Michael Bologna. Jackson! Damn! Black and white. <laughs> Motherfucker. It don't matter if you black or white. I'm going to kill your ass. <laughs> Shit, man. God. God. Back to the case. The Wayne County Prosecutor's Office say they have an head, overwhelming man. amount of evidence that points to Michael Jackson Balonis as being the person who killed Samantha Wall. They also Amy, are you the- okay? <laughs> I want to kill you, PYT. <laughs> <laughs> You I'm talking to the sun in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, man. Woo. 
he has a lengthy criminal history that includes receiving stolen property. Charged with count one, homicide, felony murder. Count two, home invasion, first degree. Count three, lying to a police officer. These are just some of the charges Michael Jackson Bolanos faces. He appeared in court for you the know first I'm time bad. he was arrested for the murder of Detroit synagogue leader, Samantha Too Wolf. Many. Wolf they, was uh, found stabbed to death outside of her lock. Uh, I've seen there was a, a Sun male judge. The Sun male judges tend to, to give the, the Sun criminals what they deserve, or how does that work? Um, You know what? I don't have any... I, I I don't know, but I know it's it's sun. There's a lot of sun male judges too, man. I I would trust there. If I had to go with the two, of course I would take the sun man judge for if I wanted um justice over the sun sister, because the sun sister sees this guy as her son, man. Um, so, and I'm sure the sun man is he could be woke too, but if the lesser of two evils would probably be a sun man judge. Lying to a police officer. These are just some of the charges Michael Jackson Bolanos faces. He appeared in court for the first time since he was arrested for the murder of Detroit synagogue leader, Samantha Wool. Wool was found stabbed to death outside of her Lafayette Park home back in October. The evidence that has been amassed in this case has been quite frankly astonishing, astonishing in its scale and astonishing in the horrific clarity that it brings to us to show what the last moments of Samantha Wool's life were like. Here's some of the evidence Assistant Prosecutor Ryan Elsie says his office has in this case. Videos extracted from dozens and dozens of locations. We've got a massive cellular data, phone extractions, DNA evidence, digital trails left behind from Miss Wool's security system. According to Elsie, the evidence shows Jackson Bolano stabbed Wool during a home invasion. He was creeping around her neighborhood in the middle of the night, stealing things out of cars, and she unfortunately left her front door open that night. Oh, no. Oh, shit. You've been hit by a son criminal. <laughs> that, like, if you got a gun, you might, you might leave the door open. But you know she didn't have a gun. Oh my god! Wow! Damn! Wow! Some man took they, that as an invitation. And they're talking all about the evidence, the amassed evidence, but he's still probably only gonna get like twenty years. Killing! 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 I'm a killing machine. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a, god. Wow. <laughs> and Annie, are you okay? Is about breaking in and murdering a woman, breaking into her house. Yeah. Say, say, say what you want, but don't you leave your door open. <laughs> we, we got this Michael Jackson, we got the Michael Jackson impersonator on the subway. <laughs> oh, God. God. Wasn't that Jordan Neely, man? Yeah, what's up with that? Yeah, yeah that case got like this memory hole, man. But uh, yeah, man, so you smooth, know, man. you know, she wished that what's his name, Daniel Penny, was around yeah. right now. She would have loved that. Whew, I'm telling you, and I know what she thought about Daniel Penny. She probably thought it was a travesty mm -hmm. what he did. Didn't realize too, it was too late. You were not alone. <laughs> He's definitely not alone. I am here with you. <laughs> Rest in peace, man. God, dog. Jesus Christ, uh -huh. man. Woo. Man. According to Elsie, the evidence shows Jackson Bolano stabbed Wool during a home invasion. He was creeping around her neighborhood in the middle of the night, stealing things out of cars, and she unfortunately left her front door open that night. Elsie says the police also found Wool's blood on Jackson Bolano's jacket that was left at his girlfriend's house. On a jacket that appears to be consistent with the very same jacket he was wearing that night. Meanwhile, Jackson Bolonos' lawyer says the evidence against his client is circumstantial. There could be a very reasonable explanation as to some of the evidence that has been. <laughs> there could be, yeah, but there isn't. <laughs> so, shout out to the sister he went home to who didn't see anything wrong about him coming home covered in the blood of another woman. 
Oh shit, man. Right, yeah, on. man. Right, she cool as shit. Right. She should have told us that. Just beat it. Beat it. <laughs> <laughs> oh right. my god, man. Right. Yeah, what's up, man? Check, check your email. I've sent you uh, uh, that book. Okay, thank you, man. Catch you later. All right, man. Take it easy, man. Salute. Man, man, man. Oh, damn. ...things out of cars, and she unfortunately left her front door open that night. Elsie says the police also found Woe's blood on Jackson Bologna's jacket that was left at his girlfriend's house. On a jacket that appears to be consistent with the very same jacket he was wearing that night. Meanwhile, Jack... <laughs> he nodded the... He's like, no, nah, I didn't do that shit. Yeah, I mean, t technically, he didn't cheat on her. He just killed the broad, right? So, like, chill out. I didn't. Che Were you all cheating on me? Nah, chill out. I I just killed the bitch. I didn't. I didn't so I'm glad, bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like door of not nah, mean. <laughs> so the white bitch anywhere is when you're the black man. Exactly. Man, Put it on the tab, man. bro. Hey man, shit man, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't fuck her man. I just, I just killed her man. That was the God, wouldn't let me get it. Elsie says the police also found Woe's blood on Jackson Bologna's jacket that was left at his girlfriend's house. On a jacket that appears to be consistent with the very same jacket he was wearing that night. Meanwhile, Jackson Bolognos' lawyer says the evidence against his client is circumstantial. That it could be a very reasonable explanation as to <laughs> some of the evidence that has been mentioned by Mr. Elsie, um, which doesn't necessarily indicate that my client has committed this particular crime. On Wednesday, a judge denied Jesus. Jackson Bologna's bail in... Black judge, black prosecutor, black lawyer. I could have done better than that. Of all the <laughs> hey, yo. It's hard to imagine. This judge is crazy. Yo, this is... This His lawyer is crazy as shit. Yeah, man. It could be a good explanation. Not guilty. I told you, son. You probably didn't good. have to pass the bar. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Oregon, man. Just go to Oregon and get your fucking oil. Yo. It could have been a... What, what's, what's the circ other circumstances that it could have blood on <laughs> Right, this is your opportunity to, to say what those circumstances are. <laughs> right, man. <laughs> and someone more dangerous than someone who's capable of killing an innocent woman, a stranger inside of her own home in the middle of the night. In Detroit, Tierra Braddock, 7 Action.